Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Pax and Garrity. It's good to be here. I know that's like a cliche, like every comedian is, oh, it's good to be here, but it is. Like, I, I've always loved and appreciated doing comedy, but even more so since the pandemic. Like, if the pandemic can show me anything, is not only am I non-essential, I am totally fucking useless other than this, is what I found out, so very grateful to do this, right? And listen, like, I know it was rough for everybody. It wasn't easy for anyone, but you know what I would do anytime I started feeling overwhelmed or depressed or like things were getting too tough. What I would do is I just hop on Facebook and I start looking up all my friends that have kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I feel better about my life almost instantaneously. It's like a magic trick. Like I'm not trying to like a dick, I'm just saying, look, we all ate a shit sandwich, but you parents, you're just double decker. You know what I'm saying? That was like a, that was like a foot long as shit. I actually, I screenshotted one of my buddy's posts. He has three children. He posted this during the pandemic. He goes, seriously, why is it that teachers aren't getting paid six figures a year? This is some bullshit. I want to fight these kids. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I want to dip my fist in glass and fight these little motherfuckers. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yo, that's like, that was like week two of a quarantine, by the way. He's already losing his shit. This poor bastard. But I do feel like that's one of the better things that come from the pandemic. I feel like people do have a new appreciation for teachers and what they do, right? Seriously, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> when everybody had to start homeschooling their kids all day long by themselves, they're like, what the fuck? You know, right? Because I think we could all agree what we're asking teachers to do as a society is insane, right? Like if, if you're a parent and you have just one kid, everybody's like, all right, well, sh you should have two parents help raise that child. Like two adults should be that kid's life so it can reach his full potential, blah, 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 bullshit. But if you're a teacher, everybody's like, yeah, hey, yo, hey, here's 35 fucking kids that are not even yours. Have fun with this. Yeah, they're all lined up. Yeah, this one pisses himself, this one shits himself, this one kicks people, this one stabs people. <laughs> don't give this one peanuts. I don't know, have fun, good luck. You know, like, like, it's fucking, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, right? All I'm saying is an observer, I feel like there should be two adults in each classroom across the country. There's one in the front doing a lesson plan, there's one in the back with a fucking cattle prod, zapping these little bastards are gonna pay attention. That's how I should be doing this shit, right? I feel so bad for teachers. Seriously, when I actually stop and think about how difficult a teacher's job is, like the only thing that surprises me with school shootings is not one of them has been by a teacher, <laughs> right? Look, we can all agree that they're awful, but I think if a teacher did one, we'd just all be like, mm -hmm. fucking pay him more, I guess. I don't know. But that's the thing, though. We're living in unprecedented times. It's unprecedented. I'm so sick of hearing unprecedented times. I feel like I've heard it 10,000 times in the past two years. Like, I remember even being on the phone with the government trying to get your money. Even a robot you're on hold with is like, we're living in unprecedented times. We're receiving an unprecedented amount of phone calls. Your wait time is an unprecedented 44 hours and 33 minutes. Bear with us together. During the, I'm like, yo, did that robot just tell me we're just together? You piece of shit, right? Yeah, I get it. Shit's unprecedented. When the fuck is it gonna be precedented again? That's what I wanna know, right? Yeah, somebody press the precedented button because this sucks, you know? It got weird, it got weird for a little bit. Like when we couldn't buy toilet paper and like when there was no toilet paper anywhere. In my head, I'm like, yo, should I take my $200 and go renew my car registration? Or should I just head on to Home Depot, buy a sludge hammer, start in the fucking Thunderdome shape? Like, what are we doing here? You know what I'm saying? Personally, I was hoping for a Thunderdome. Not that I didn't want to participate. I just want to see some of the matchups that they'd have, you know? In this corner at five foot five, 217 pounds, it's Karen. <laughs> she wanted to see the manager, now she's got us. The cycle from Applebee's comes out for the chainsaw. You're like, oh, fuck. All right. Shit just got real, bitch, you know? 
but we're getting better, you know. Is it's like because I remember, like I'm, I'm so glad that the apocalypse didn't happen because I'd be fucking dead by now, you know. Like I have no survival skills, right? And that was what's funny to me is like a lot of people are like it's a good thing that we have society and civilization because without that we'd become animals pretty quick. I'm like, you know what? I think animals are a lot better than human beings in a lot of ways anyway, you know. Like, right? One of my favorite stories was before the pandemic was the Australian fires. In Australia, they had wombats that had underground burrows, and they were letting other animals from completely different species hide out in their burrows to get away from the fires. I was like, oh, my God, that's adorable. Right? Yeah, right? I was like, oh, little Disney movie going underground. That's amazing. Right? I was like, oh, it like, got me, right? You know, then I started thinking about human beings. I'm like, mm, not so much, you know? Like, I'd have to track down with these doomsday preppers. They're not just prepping for doomsday. They're hoping it happens, you know? Like one of those, you know what I'm talking about? Like those cycles just sitting on the couch watching the news. Then the local news guy's like, anarchy and chaos is spreading throughout the country. He's like, Ch -ch -ch, about time. He's ready to go, you know? You know, like it's his time to shine. Now I got to hide out with this psycho in his shipping container. He has beard in his backyard. And me and 40 other bewildered people, no survival skills. He's just hurtling. Like, yeah, come on in. Five of us are still in our bathrobes. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, you know? It's like, it's all right, stay calm, relax, I prepare for this, there's plenty of food and water, everything's going to be okay. Then he shuts the latch, he's like, all right, few rules. <laughs> Rule number one, nobody breeds but me. Yeah, nobody's fucking unless I'm fucking, all right? Rule number two, no pants, because I don't like pockets. And rule number three, you will all refer to me as my lord. All right, it's Wednesday. Who wants to suck my Lord's dick for some Campbell's Soup Extra Chunky? You're like, oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. I don't think this guy's a wombat at all. This is terrible. <laughs> like, let's just be honest. Like, how many guys in here, if the apocalypse were to happen, would be this dude? I don't know how to start a fire without a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Are these berries poisonous? Can I eat these? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Generation Z, I don't know how to change a tire. Gang bang. Fucking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be grateful that we still have AC, is all I'm saying. It was so fun. I'm just glad, though. I mean, it's just nice to be able to travel again, man. It's nice to be able to you know, fucking do it. Like, I was in Oklahoma not too long ago, and it's weird, too, because my, my very first experience ever in Oklahoma. Uh, I, I had to do with uh, Fort Sill for basic, and, and for basic training. And listen, don't, don't, don't come up to me after the show and say thank you for your service, because first of all, I was in the reserves. I didn't do anything. Right? Save that handshake for somebody who went overseas. And the, and the only reason I even joined the military is because they let you pick your job. They're like, how about infantry? I was like, how about no? I was like, what else you got? Right? They're like, what about a medic? I was like, what about I got a GED? Like, I couldn't think of a more horrifying scenario of being on the battlefield and getting shot and having a good guy running up to giving me medical attention as a fucking GED, right? That'd be like the worst thing. I was like, I would like something with as little responsibility as is humanly possible. Like, all right, what about ADA? I'm like, what's that? Like, oh, that's air defense artillery. It means you shoot down airplanes. I was like, mm, fucking sign me up. That's the one, I'll take that one, right? Because I thought about it, and Iraq doesn't have an Air Force. I was like, nailed it. That's the best job you can pick, I'm pretty sure. You know? It's coming out there looking at a completely empty sky. I'm like, killing that? This is fucking easy, right? And I had a bunch of friends and family, you know, after I got there, they were asking me questions. I had one buddy in particular, he was thinking about joining. He was like, hey, man, you know, what was it like? What was basic training like? What'd you do? I'm like, well, it sucks, you know? As soon as you get there, you lose all your privacy. Like, I'm sharing a room with 52 other people. And I'd ask myself the same question every night before I went to bed. And that was, why the hell do people who snore always fall asleep first? <laughs> right? Like, I don't know, but it sucks, right? Especially with 52 people, because everybody's different, you know? Like, I had one guy sound like he was swallowing something in the middle of the night. That's good. It's like 2.30 in the morning, you're just dozing off. He's just warming up. You hear him with, like, a bunk over, he's like... <laughs> I'm like, oh, Jesus. What are you dreaming out there, Pac-Man? You know, he's just munching nonstop. I swear to God, though, the worst snorer I've ever had in my life, though, was my dad. 
I remember about a month ago, he came to a show. I was like, oh, don't worry, Pops, you could crash with me at the hotel. I didn't realize the hotel only had a queen-size bed, so I had to share a bed with my dad, right? The, he snores, he snores like he will just not breathe out. You ever had one of these people? It was like <laughs> I'm like, holy shit! What the fuck is wrong with your face? It's like, are you just switching gears? Is this, is this happening? You know? Oh, it's horrible. Like 2.30 in the morning, I couldn't take it anymore. So I just sat up and I just karate chopped in the chest and laid back down real quick. <laughs> he woke up all fucked up. Like, <laughs> what happened? Did you have a bad dream? Sleeping next to you has been a fucking nightmare. Uh, and, I, and here's the thing, though. I, like, like, when I went to basic training, it was, like, so long ago. Like, we were, we were still doing bayonet training when I went. Right? Yeah. For those of you that aren't familiar with bayonet training, that's when you run out of ammo, then you take a knife, then you stick out of your rifle to stab people with it. Like, I'm all out of ammo. And start stabbing. Right? And here's the crazy part. When they train, the bayonet training is you just ran down... A little, a little alley, and they just stab tires while you scream at the top. You like, like show me your war face. Aah! I'm like, really? Like, if I'm out of ammo, shouldn't I be? I don't know, a little more sneaky. I'm thinking with the bayonet. Like, would that be better? Like, when the Emma Fudd approach be the best way? Like, be very, very quiet is a lot better than. Aah! Like, I'm all for looking like a hero from my country, but look like an imbecile to the bad guys. I don't see any sense in that, you know? Ah, what the hell is he doing? Wait till it gets closer, then we'll shoot him. I, I... And they had the jobs they had back, you know, like, I, I, like, I'm like, at least it's like, you know, nowadays, because I, I watch a lot of History Channel. I'm like, at least it was like the Revolutionary War times. That's when they had like the, the guy that had to carry the flag in the battle. I'm like, oh my God. If I was like, hey, yo, they can see the flag. It's on a pole. They can see it from the back. There's no reason to be up front. This is bullshit, you know? Like that's gotta be like a kind of a mix. It's an honor to carry the flag, but at the same time, you're carrying a flag, you know? Yeah, that's gotta be scary as shit, you know? You're just marching. And then the guy next to you is a dick. He's like, wave it around. You're like, wave it around like that? <laughs> That's got to be scary shit. And then the fucking, the, the, I swear to God, though, the worst job ever back then had to be like the musical instrument people, like the band. How did that work out? It's like, rifle, 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 flute. Are we out of rifles? I was kind of hoping I could get a rifle. Uh, flute. My favorite though was the was the uh, was the Scottish with the bagpipes. That was a good idea, right? I'm killing that son of a bitch first. That is awful. That guy needs to die immediately. That is like the worst sound. And back when I went, they had a lot of issues, you know? Like, gays in the military was a big deal when I joined, you know? But then in 2011, they finally the, the, had the don't ask, don't tell policy, which is pretty cool. It was like, don't ask, don't tell. I was like, that's great. But now in my head, I'm like, I think there's some certain circumstances <laughs> where you can tell when you don't have to ask, you know, <laughs> right? Like, if you see a soldier, you're like, grenade! <laughs> then it explodes and glitter goes everywhere. <laughs> and he just pops back up. It's like, now you smell like strawberries. <laughs> oh, man. It's been fun traveling, though, man. Like, I, I especially like going places where people are friendly. And I got to tell you, after all the years I've been doing this, the friendliest people I've ever met in my life 
Canadians, hands down. They're the best. Yeah, yeah. I'm, j listen, just to give you an idea how nice these people are, I was driving around up there, and my car sucks. I needed a jump, and the first guy that I asked helped me. Right? I was like, holy shit. I was like, first try? I was like, are you a serial killer? How's this this easy, you know? Like, I don't know about you guys, but I don't even like asking friends for favors, let alone a complete stranger. Because sometimes people are assholes, and it's awkward. Like, my favorite scenario is when it goes down like this. You're like, hey, I'm really sorry to bother you. I was really jammed up right now. Just one of you help me out with a jump. I'd really appreciate it. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't have any cables. Well, that's okay. I got some. <laughs> right? Like, you could see in their head. They're like, how do I make my face not look like fuck? You know? And I just feel like things would be so much easier if people were a little more honest. Like, oh, hey, sorry to bother you. I was just wondering if you help me out with a jump. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have any compassion. <laughs> I'm a super shitty person. You should just probably move along. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No problem. Sorry to bother you. You know what? I should go back to my car and punch my steering wheel as hard as I can. Thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah? And the thing that I hate the most about needing a jump is that overwhelming feeling of helplessness. Like you're just stuck until somebody else decides to help you. Like you gotta stand out in the parking lot next to the car with the hood up. And you're just fucking waiting for somebody, like a pound puppy, you know? Like the only thing I could compare it to is I feel like a turtle on his back, you know? Right? Like you ever seen a more pathetic, helpless looking creature? Right? Let me tell you, I saw this video on Facebook that made me feel good. It was like a compilation of different turtles all on their backs. And in each instance, another turtle would come along and instinctively be like, I got you, buddy, and flip the other turtle back over in his feet. Oh, I know. Yeah, it got me. It did. They were playing Lean On Me the whole time, too. I was like, Jesus Christ. It's like, this is heartwarming as shit, you know? See a little turtle walking up to help out his buddy? Just call on me, brother, if you need a hand. Because we all need somebody to lean on. I'm like, oh, my God. These little dudes high five after this. I'm going to fucking cry, you know, <laughs> right? If I find a video like that on Facebook, I try to get off immediately, you know? I want to feel good for 10 minutes. I want to walk away with a win, you know what I'm saying? Like anybody else get on Facebook and th go through like 17 different emotions in six seconds? You hop in and you're like, ha ha ha, 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 just fucking flipping through emotions. That's why I like that turtle video so much. I thought about it for days. Like three days later in traffic, I was just like, how great is that? You know? I'm like, if you're a turtle and you're on your back and you see another turtle coming towards you, you know 100% that turtle's gonna help you out. No questions asked. You want to know why? Because nature doesn't make apathetic turtles. Yeah. You're like, you're never going to see a turtle on his back. Another turtle walking by, he's like, Hey, what's up, buddy? I don't know if you noticed, but uh, I'm in a pretty fucked up situation. And I was kind of hoping maybe you could help me get back on my feet. And the other turtle's just like, Thoughts and prayers, like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But gee, thanks, fuckface. They really helped out my situation. So glad you came along. I'm just saying, people are shitty sometimes. Like one time, I asked this lady for a jump. She told me to my face. She was like, I didn't want to do that to my car. Yeah, she gave me one of these, you know? You street urchin, right? I'm like, you don't want to do that to your car? My Honda doesn't have vehicular herpes, you bitch. You ain't gonna fucking jump here. That's your brain work. Oh. Whatever, she was in a rush, had to kill some fucking Dalmatians. I don't know what she was up to, whatever. It's been good though, man. I got a, I got a great girlfriend I've been seeing a lot lately. And here's the thing, like, I, I just know it's, it's hard being single. Like, I get it, like, especially they, like some people don't even understand what it means to be single. Some people think that just because you're not married that that means you're single. No, single means not married, not dating, not seeing anyone like this. This this thing like oh, by myself. 
No. You got to turn your teddy bears around. Like, don't look at me, Mr. Cuddles. Don't look at me when I do this. Don't look. Don't look. I don't know, some of you guys might be freaks. Like, look at me, Mr. Cuddles. You look what I do there when I do it. Look at it. I don't know what the fuck you guys are up to. I know it's difficult for everybody though, right? But I have to say, I have to admit, as a man, it's a little, it's a little more difficult for women, right? Because you have to deal with men, you know? And it's like, and here's the thing. Like, it's, it's, it's hard when you even first give us your number. Because all we want to talk about is sex, that's it. Whatever you're talking about, we're trying to steer it towards sex. Any way possible, anyway we can think of. Like, we'll call you up and be real innocent. Like, hey, what's up? What's going on? What are you doing? Oh, not much. I got some coffee. Oh, you got some coffee? Is it hot? <laughs> Did you have to blow on it? <laughs> All right. She's like, no, silly, it's a macchiato, and it's chilled. She's trying to stir it back to a regular conversation. She just knows exactly what you're doing. Like, oh, it's chilled? Fuck. <laughs> Is it creamy? <laughs> All right. And that's most guys. That's most, but some guys are really bad, because they'll take anything. No matter what the situation is, they'll call you up. Hey, what's up? What's going on? What are you doing? Oh my God, I'm at the hospital. My grandmother just had a stroke. Well, I got something you could stroke. What? Uh, uh. Uh. I mean, I hope your grandma's okay, is what I meant. Uh. It's like, no, she's not. She's in this room with all these machines and all these tubes are down her throat. Uh, I have to go. <laughs> Best wishes to your Nana, you know? And another thing, I was like, I, it just, it, this made me disappointed, like, as a man. You, you ever see shit where you're like, you're just disappointed as a whole, you're like, God damn it, right? Like, this girl, uh, she was on Facebook, very pretty, and she posted this private messenger conversation between her and another dude. He was like, hey, what's up? And she was nice enough to respond. She was like, well, not much. I just moved to Colorado. He's like, cool. I moved to Colorado too. He's like, nice, are you working anywhere? His response, dick pic. <laughs> are you working anywhere? Time to see my dick. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? What are you doing? You think girls are just hanging out by themselves? Like, what's your girl gotta do to get a dick pic around here? That's not how fucking ladies hang out, you know? And of course, as soon as she posted this, all of her friends started chiming in immediately like, uh-uh, ew, no fucking gross. Unsolicited dick pics are disgusting. I got like five last week. I was like, ah! Five in a week? Jesus Christ. That's like walking down the street and dicks are just shooting out of trash cans and shit just fucking scare the shit out of you. It's like, how do you live your life like this? That's horrible, you know? But I'll admit though, I, I did laugh a little bit where she was like, unsolicited dick pics are disgusting. I'm like, unsolicited? Who the fuck is soliciting dick pics? Is that happening? Is that a thing? Is that happening? Because immediately in my head, I just picture some dude going door to door like a Jehovah's Witness. And it's just like, hello. Are you the lady of the house? I was just wondering if you'd be interested in some pamphlets I have to show you. It's just lots of pictures of my dick, right? And I think the main... <laughs> I think the main problem is, it's just too easy to take your t picture of your dick and just send it out there. And, let it, and if you're gonna, dude, if you're that much of a piece of shit that you're gonna send a dick pic out to somebody, give her a heads up, be a gentleman. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know what her lifestyle is. She, she could be letting her niece play Candy Crush and then all of a sudden her four-year-old niece starts crying out of nowhere, right, because you're a piece of shit, right? If you're gonna send a dick pic, give a, give, give a heads up, give something like um, torpedo incoming. That'd be the best. That'd be a fucking, like, tor <laughs> like torpedo incoming, then dick pic, bam, right there. You know, like an impact imminent, bitch, right? And here's the thing too, is it's like, I think it's just rude, cause it's, you know, you just sit, take a picture of your dick and just get it out for a Yelp review, whatever the fuck you're trying to do. You know, like it's confusing to me. Cause I, I grew up in the 80s. If you wanted to show your dick to somebody back in the 80s, it took a little bit of effort. All right. First, you have to buy a trench coat, some sneakers. You're just fucking walking around, hanging out at bus stops at two or three. Who's the lucky lady? Here's my dick. I'm gonna run away. 
Fucking pull the hamstrings, didn't stretch first. It's scary out there. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm at a weird age, too. Like, all my friends, I mean, all my friends are getting married now, too. I, I, like, some of them are getting divorced also, but most of them are getting married. But that's the thing, though. Marriage scares the shit out of me because of the statistics, you know? Like, 50% of marriages end in divorce, and according to Forensic Files, another 25% end in fucking murder. You guys over there, that shit. Yeah, people kill each other a lot. Yeah, apparently, there's a very thin line between soulmate and suspect, right? And some of the shit you learn when you watch these shows is insane. Like, I watched an entire marathon one weekend. This one guy killed his wife by poisoning her with antifreeze. He kept slipping into her Gatorade. And the cops suspected him from the get-go. They're like, all right, we're pretty sure this asshole did it. So they started to do all the emails that got the evidence. And they found a very suspicious email from the guy's wife to one of her friends. She's like, yeah, I'm still not feeling well, but Doug's been great. He's been giving me Gatorade like 17, 18 times a day. I'm like, oh, that's a lot of Gatorade, buddy. You know, like you just come in every hour like, somebody needs some electrolytes, right? <laughs> and then, then they had this other guy. This guy killed his wife. Okay, and listen, ladies, I'm only using examples of guys killing their wives just because I feel like women are better at it for some reason. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, after watching a marathon of this shit, I kind of noticed a pattern. It seems like women have to kill four or five husbands in a row before cops are like, hey, what's going on over here? Your husbands seem to be dying a lot. They get some complaints. Mrs. Harrison hyphen Davis hyphen Garrison hyphen Schwartzman. A lot of hyphens. You know? Yeah, but yeah, per, hyphen Percy and Percy, you know, all that shit. And I feel like, I feel like guys get caught more because we're just so arrogant about it, you know? We feel like we're gonna get away with it because we're so smart, right? <laughs> like this dude killed his wife, but his whole thing was he trying to make it like a suicide because he was gonna fool the investigators? Yeah. That's all I love when they had that narrator that helps you break down the investigation throughout the entire episode. Like he's super serious. He sounds like that unsolved mysteries do a little bit. He's like, he tried to make the murder look like a suicide. And at first, forensically, it appeared that it was. However, the suicide note aroused suspicions. It simply read, I am too overwhelmed with depression to go on living. I hope my children know how much I love and adore them. And to my wonderful, loving, patient husband, the greatest lover I've ever known. I swear the only thing in this world I miss more than the faces of my beautiful children is his big fat cock. Boy, can he fuck. <laughs> I only hope my smoking hot sister will be there for him in his time of need. <laughs> because he deserves so much better than a nagging fucking bitch like me. Shortly after the discovery of the suicide note, Investigators realized the husband was full of shit. I'm like, oh. Hey, buddy, do you know anything about this conspicuous suicide note? He's like, uh, nope. <laughs> no, it's Missy Road. I got a huge dick and she loved it. Don't I tell you, right? And my favorite part about this episode was he later found out that it wasn't even his first murder attempt. He later admitted his first murder attempt was he took a half a dozen mice that he bought from a pet store and put them in a subtle console of a car. Then he waited until she was on her way to work, and then he called her. He was like, hey, honey, I think that my wallet is in the console. Can you take a look? And she opened it up, and the mice were everywhere. She wrecked and crashed the car. I'm like, are you fucking Wiley Coyote trying to kill your wife right now? Like, is there a plan? You drop a piano in next week? What are you doing, you know? And if you really want to help me out, this is for free. If you're on social media, fucking give me a like. I'd appreciate that more than buying anything.
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I know you're like, well, who the fuck are you, third guy? It's Patrick Garrity. My name's about right there. Look at Twitter. And I like that they have my Twitter. Like, I, I need the most help on Twitter. I'm fucking losing people on Twitter. Like, I'll think shit's funny, then I'll tweet something, and then I'll lose two people, right? <laughs> By the way, that's how low my Twitter following is, that I notice when I lose two people. So there's that. I'm just like fucking, oh, I just, that one didn't do good, you know? Apparently, this was, this was one of my controversial tweets. I didn't think it was controversial. I thought it was funny. So I'm going to read it to you. You can be the judge. Uh, so this is, a, this is a while back when Henry Cavill, the actor who plays Superman, said he wasn't going to be Superman anymore. So everybody's like, well, who's going to be a new Superman? Because that's important. So some people start talking about Michael B. Jordan being the new Superman. So we'd have a black Superman. And everybody was losing their shit. So I tweeted this. I was like, wow, if the white Superman is faster than a speeding bullet, can you imagine how fast a black one will be? <laughs> yeah, fucking thank you, right? Fucking send. Yeah, that's not controversial. Black people are faster than white people. That should be common knowledge by now. <laughs> Unless he's just been ignoring the Olympics for the past 80 years. The fuck have you been doing, you know? But I think we can all agree, though, that the funniest is when Jesse Owens won four gold medals in the late 30s in front of Nazis, because they were talking a lot of shit. I just keep thinking about how bad it must have been for the guy racing against Jesse Owens with Hitler looking down pissed off. He's like, what the fuck? He's like, I don't know, he's so fast. Trying to catch this guy, you know? He's trying his hardest. But he also, he also won the long jump. Jesse won the gold medal in the long jump. He beat a dude named Luce Long. Yeah, the guy's, the guy's last name was Long. He still lost the fucking long jump to Jesse Owens, right? I felt like his boys had to be hyping him up. They're like, don't, don't even worry about it. He just wants a race. He's got to be exhausted. I'm sure his legs are very tired. It'll be, be fine. It'll be it's good. It's like... <laughs> that was a pretty good jump, but that was pretty good. The fear is watching, good luck. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm gonna read you a couple more just so you know what you're getting into. All right, this one's, this one's really dumb. All right, all right. The other day, I was looking at a bird and I thought to myself, man, I wish I could fly. But I'm pretty sure that bird was looking back at me thinking, man, I wish I could masturbate. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys laughed at that. You know, I did that joke like a month ago. Literally, everybody in the audience just went, oh. Yeah. Like I'm out here real life binoculars. Is that a fucking blue jay? Oh, uh -huh, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. That guy definitely jerks off the birds. Look at his face. I'm going to read you one more. This, this is my most retweeted tweet. I'm pretty proud of it. Like I'm having, but I had to explain a little bit. This is about how fast food restaurants like to compete with each other, right? Like at Burger King, they have the Whopper, and then they have the Whopper Junior, right? So <laughs> Wendy's came out with a Baconator, and then the son of Baconator. Yeah, so if you want a tiny Baconator, you have to say, I want a son of Baconator, because apparently hamburgers are fucking other hamburgers and having baby hamburgers, right? right. So, so I tweeted this, and I was like, the other day at Wendy's, I ordered a Baconator and Son of Baconator. I ate the Son of Baconator in front of the Baconator first. <laughs> Just as the Baconator know, I'm not fucking around. Yeah, no so if you want to hear more of that dumb shit, you go ahead and look me up. You know, yeah. Uh, mm. Ah, man. I love doing, this is such a fun club to do. You know, it's just like, this is like where you guys, you guys have been so fun. I, get, I, I was just in Vegas too, not too long ago. I was performing at this place in Vegas. It's called the LA Comedy Club in Las Vegas. And I gotta tell you, my favorite thing about working the LA Comedy Club in Las Vegas is I don't have to go to fucking LA to work the LA the Comedy Club. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know you where. Yeah, you guys get it. Yeah, LA's a shithole, it's disgusting. Um, I, w I was reading, I was scrolling through Facebook, and I came across one of their local news stories, and the headline just read, homeless man 
dumps hot bucket of diarrhea on women. Yeah. That's why you get off of the turtle video before you see shit like this. You're like, I gotta fucking get off. You know? Yeah. A, a hot bucket of diarrhea. Just in case room temperature diarrhea wasn't gross enough. Yeah. Twas a hot bucket of diarrhea. I read that in my head. I'm like, that should lower the property value of that entire fucking city. It's like, I don't give a shit how nice your weather is. That you're dumping hot buckets of diarrhea on people out there? Like, could you imagine just standing on a street corner waiting for your Uber? You're like, oh, it's such a nice day today. The sploosh! Fuck! <laughs> then your Uber pulls up. He's like, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this ride because you're covered in shit. I don't need you in my fucking Nissan right now. I feel like it would have been really, in my head, like, this is how fucked up I am. I thought it would have been funny if he hit her with that bucket and then ran away. And then immediately another homeless guy ran up with a squeegee. He's like, <laughs> like, wouldn't that be the most L.A. thing to ever happen to anybody? Like, they're in cahoots, you know? And I feel like, you know, when he first walked up with that bucket, she was probably like, I'm sorry, I don't have any change. He's like, yeah, this isn't that. It's just fucking, it's fucking, just fucking, it's a nightmare for you. <laughs> and I also, like, and this is another one of the places, my, I, like, in my head, I'm like, getting hit with a hot bucket of diarrhea, that's some information I would really appreciate, like a tarot card reading if you're in that kind of thing, you know? Oh, tell me about my future. What's in store? What's coming up for me? Oh, let's just take a look at your cards. Oh, well, there's the sun card. That means rejuvenation. That means you're going to have a little more pep in your step, a little more zest for life, that sort of thing. Oh, that sounds nice. Oh, what's that card right there? Oh, that's the watchtower card. That means change is coming in your life. It might be a new job opportunity, a new lover, or maybe just personal growth and maturity, something like that. Oh, that's cool. What's that card right there? Oh, that's the hot bucket of diarrhea card. Oh. Oh, that sounds mysterious. What's that mean? Oh, that means stay away from Circle K's on Ventura Boulevard. That's what the fuck that means. Like, oh, this is very specific. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll tell you one thing I was pretty happy about recently is, you know, like everybody, when you get a new phone, you're like, oh, I got a new phone. But I was happy because I, I upgraded to a new phone service. Like I upgraded to Verizon and they're the best. And I know they're the best because my friend that works at Sprint fucking told me they're the best. So I know they're the best. It makes me feel good. Because let me tell you, when cell phones first came out, I started off with the worst. They're not even around anymore. I used to have Nextel. Remember this piece of shit? I remember one time I saw about Nextel. This dude, the audience was like, woo! I'm like, what are you, what are you wooing Nextel? He's like, woo! I'm like, yeah, woo! I love drop calls, they rock, that's awesome. You know, I love calling somebody nine times in a row for one conversation, that's so great. Like Verizon's slogan used to be, hey, can you hear me now? Nextel should have been, hey, what was the last thing you heard me say? That should have been Nextel, that's been a slogan that they're terrible, right? I had a buddy of mine, he's like, dude, I hate when I call customer service and I get somebody from India. I'm like, oh, oh, you mean Gandhi's people? <laughs> and I also feel like people bitch about the dumbest shit when it comes to the phones and they don't even realize how dumb it is, the shit they're bitching about, you know? Like, like the most, patient people on the entire planet, you know, deal with these people customer service? Like, all I'm saying, have any of you ever yelled at an Indian person? Yeah, you can scream at them for hours. They will never hang up on you. Like, you could be going berserk and losing your mind. They always stay calm. They're just like, yes, sir. I understand you're feeling very frustrated. But me eating shit and fucking myself is not going to be a current situation. <laughs> Always thought it'd be funny though, if at the call center, if the black chick was sitting next to the Indian dude and she was just like, Babe, you don't gotta take that shit. <laughs> don't let them talk to you like that. They're calling you for assistance. They need your help. This America, baby, shit ain't Calcutta. <laughs> Look. I've had this motherfucker on hold right now for 15 minutes because I don't like the way he said hello. <laughs> don't let him talk to you like that. 
Then the next phone call, the Indian dude's like, no, 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 you suck my dick, motherfucker. Like, he's just taking no shit. Hey, you guys have been outstanding, man. Thank you so much for coming out. Patrick Aaron.